Hello everybody, hello angels, uh, I'm Guido from Watch Angels and welcome to this factory review of the Waltham Field and Marine dual time 24 hours. So we have decided to do this, uh, this review directly from the factory. You know our system, we try to do everything in-house and everything direct with you. That's why we also invited today uh, four angels from Switzerland. Which, uh, which participated to the angel sale of, uh, of Waltham, so helped this uh, project to come alive. Uh, so I will do a quick review, and they will also uh, rate the models on different criteria. So the review will be in different parts. So the first one is about why we chose the field and marine, the second is about the design, why we designed it the way we did. And then I will go over the specs a little bit and the aesthetics. And then I will show you the available range and also talk about uh, prices. So maybe let's start with why we, uh, we chose the field and marine. So when we sat down the first time with the owner of the Waltham trademark, uh, we had to decide which watch we do. And of course, Waltham did 40 million watches and, and I don't know how many models over their 100 year history, so it was a very difficult task. And in the end we said, well, you know, if we, if we start this brand, it has to be uh, a significant watch, you know, a different watch, a watch which really has a meaning, uh, a watch which has made a mark in the watch industry. And very soon, we realized that this was the field and marine. Why? Because arguably it is the first waterproof watch which really worked. Uh, it's a watch which made history also because of the maybe the sad moment in which it was created, which was, you know, uh, during the First World War. But sometimes humanity creates the biggest innovation when in need. And one of these big innovations was the Waltham Field and Marine. So why? It was a watch which had to resist to the trench war warfare of the time, which was a very tough environment. There was water, there was mud, there was dust, and there was mustard gas. So the watch had, had to be completely watertight. Uh, if not, it would just you know, break uh, and the movement would, would break with all these elements and all the watches of the time were just not up to the task. Until a gentleman called Charles Depolier set his mind to creating the first watch which would resist to this tough environment. And, you know, after many trials, he came up with the technology of the Waltham Field and Marine. So this is the reason why we chose this watch, very important American watch. Then about the design, two choices. The first one was to redo the original one-to-one -one, like, a, like a replica or to try and do something different. And uh, yeah, we went for the second alternative, doing something different. Firstly, because, you know, there can be only one original. So we really said, okay, let's do this watch like Waltham would have done it today according to today's standards and aesthetic sensibility. But of course, keeping the codes uh, of the original field and marine there. It's always a very difficult exercise, very difficult, because you risk to go either too much towards the original being too vintage or going too modern, and then in one way or another, you lose the, the link to the original. So and I think this challenge uh, has been overcome because we believe the design, the design carries the codes of the original field and marine. Look at the shape, the proportions, the bezel, it's all there, the crown. And then on the dial, we used the same typeface for the numerals. But as you can see, 
making them smaller and, and reworking the proportions while being, yeah, still has, having a, a vintage character, it has become resolutely modern. Um, maybe you can see also on, on my wrist, it's vintage, but it's not old. And it's definitely a field and marine. So the movement is a Soprod C115, dual time, 24 hours, with a power reserve indicator. It has a power reserve of 42 hours. So, and on the watch, you can see that uh, in terms of the sub counter. So, the sub counter at six o'clock is the 24 hour counter. The counter at 12 o'clock is the power reserve counter. So, you also see it written. So, it goes from zero to 42, so 42 hours. It has a date. Because of the movement and the construction, the date sits pretty deep, but it looks nice. There is a small magnifying glass and very pleasing to the eye. In terms of aesthetics, what is interesting is that the crown part really defines the design of this watch. Uh, I must say, some people think it's a, it's a chronograph until, because of the two crown protectors, until they see the, the second hand moving, of course, the whole time. Again, here you see the crown system. This was also the, uh, the technical challenge. So what we tried to do is to update the original patent of Charles Depoyer and also eliminating things which today are irrelevant. So it's a big crown, you can see. It has a big presence, a big presence. It's also what you see when you wear it. It's really the, the identity of this, of this piece. It has a functional reason because, of course, being a watch which was made for tough conditions, you had to be able to manipulate it easily in, you know, with cold hands or, or with gloves, etc., etc. The link, so it's a bayonet system. It's not a screw-in crown, it's a bayonet, which is a a construction which is, you know, more than 100 years old, but it's still one of those solid, qualitative constructions which rarely go wrong. Same cannot be said of screwing crowns because sometimes they block. What is interesting also of this system, it's, you feel it in your hands, it's, it's really solid. You have the feeling you control the crown. You know when it's open, you know when, when it's closed, uh, it gives you a high sense of security. So the bayonet system, you turn and you pull out. Very simple. You turn and you pull in. There is, you can see, a small brass element here. So that element does two things. It preloads the gasket, so it helps the water resistance when you turn in, you, you turn in the crown. And then it has a little pin and when that pin is on top, so uh, direction 12 o'clock, you know the crown is closed. Now to the different, uh, to the different versions. Uh, three models, two stainless steel models, and one gunmetal PVD model. Pretty dark gunmetal, it goes towards the black. The first one is white dial, white lacquered dial. So this one is probably the closest to the era, to, to the 1920s. Personally, I love it, and with black numerals. Very, very strong contrast. The numerals sit very high, it's applied numerals, and you really have a very nice uh, 3D effect. The second model is a navy blue sunray dial, very elegant, uh, deep blue, changes the tone a bit, of course, depending on how on the angle of the light. I would say this is the more elegant one of the three, but of course that's subjective. A nice gentleman trench watch. The third one is the most military version. So the black PVD, very thick Cordura technical strap with a beige super 
luminova. The superluminova is one grade, so the strongest, so visibility needs to be, to be perfect, and the effect in the dark is pretty stunning. To the last part, well, the price. So during the public pre-sale, uh, the stainless steel models go for 1,280 Swiss francs, and the PVD model goes for 1,350 Swiss francs. So prices which are only possible because of the direct crowd manufacturing model, meaning that it's a watch which has been developed, marketed, sold only because be between our three entities, the creator, the enthusiast, and the manufacturer. So thank you very much. I hope I've been able to illustrate these watches clearly. Hope to see you during the public pre-sale, which starts April 30th at 9.30 p.m. And we will follow up with our angels who will rate these models. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. So welcome to the second part of the factory review. So we have the pleasure of welcoming four angels from Switzerland. Uh, we made a draw, not everybody could come. Uh, Switzerland because of COVID, of course, because nobody can travel. So the angels are here to give also their opinion on the field and marine. Thank you for being here, really. And I would say, let's go to, uh, to make the, the test of the field and marine, okay? okay? Let's go. Okay, so welcome to the second part of the factory review of the field and marine. As said, we, we wanted an honest opinion. The angels will check out the watches and will rate them according to nine criteria. And everybody will vote. They will vote by raising numbers, so from one to five. So we start by giving you the questionnaire. So you can, uh, you can look at it, check out the watches, you can talk between each other or not, you do whatever you want. Then what you do is you will rate every criteria from one to five. You can write it on the sheets of paper and then afterwards and make an angel ranking of the watches. Go ahead, guys. Okay, so I think the verdict has fallen. Was it hard? Yes. When okay. You see, angels have a very definite angels' opinion, of course. If not, they would not be angels, right? So now we do the votes. Uh, the first criteria is the appearance score. And the appearance score is about mainly four things. It's the beauty of the watch. So the design, uh, everything which has to do with the feeling about the aesthetics and the look on the wrist. So for criteria one, the vote, angel vote is, so that's a clean five. We go to criteria two, so it's about materials. So it's the optical perception of the materials and the quality to the, to the touch. So what's the, your vote on criteria two? So that's again a clear five, really unbiased. So now criteria three, which makes sometimes the difference between one price category and another. And that's the quality of the finishes. Again, an optical feeling about the quality of the finishings and the precision of those finishings. So what's the vote on this one? It's unbelievable. God. So another clean five. 
So we go to criteria four. Another uh, quality criteria. This is the quality of the construction, the feel about the construction as a whole. So the idea is here is about the robustness, the feeling of robustness, and the overall sentiment you get about yeah, the, the solidity of the watch. So what's your score? Okay, so this is three fives and one four. Uh, criteria number five, wearability. So this is purely how you feel it on your wrist. So it's comfort and wrist fit. Again, three five and one four. Criteria number six, it's the uniqueness factor. So the uniqueness factor is composed of uniqueness in design, maybe also compared to the designs which are there on the market, uniqueness of the history, and uniqueness of the legacy. What's your vote? Four times five, done? Five. Okay, thank you. So that's a clean five, incredible, fantastic. And the next criteria, uh, key criteria, of course, is your feeling about the price-quality relation, so the value for money. So three, three sub-criteria, value for money, value for the history you buy, and value for the design you buy. What's your vote here? Okay, wow, a clean five. Wow, that's great. So the last criteria is about the production facility in terms of you know, infrastructure and machinery, overall impression of the know-how of the company, and the comprehensiveness of the services. What is your vote here? It's uh, humbled and honored. And I don't know if we already have a, a total angel score. I was really impressed. From all the watches that I have had in my hand, this is the best crown that I have had to manipulate. So, regard for that. I would consider um, maybe increasing the size of the date, numerals and window. And other than that, I am super happy that I chose the blue dial and I'm upset with myself that I didn't buy one of each. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I find very original the, the chrome of this dimension. It gives really a good feeling when you touch it and when you turn it. And it's something really new on a watch. And especially I was in love with the combination of colors between the green label and this kind of black. Uh, I loved it. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for your input. You can also do it in Italian or in French, it's okay. We'll do under titles. Penso che negli ultimi anni orologi così se ne siano visti veramente pochi. E rispecchia tanto quello che era comunque già la linea del, del Baltam a suo tempo. E la, e la possibilità di scegliere tre modelli così diversi e, e, Secondo me è un, un buon punto di forza anche per il prodotto perché... Ok, so thanks. So, uh, yeah, the, the design of the watch is very unique. So not similar to anything that I've seen in the last, uh, in the last you know, years or, or times. Uh, I feel it very, you know, Waltham. And I love very much also the, the combinations of colors which, which, uh, which the collection has. Okay, guys, well, thank you very much. I, uh, yep. I hope that you speak really for the community. And uh, we must say you are the first angels coming from to the factory. So we're very happy. And uh, we'll make this a uh, fixed appointment for every collection. And uh, we have plans for the future also to make much more face-to-face -face activities. Thank you very much and uh, 
I think now we can have a, we merit a good drink. Thank you, Rido. Thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you to the entire team. So, uh, once again, here is Dan. As you very well know, I am passionate about supporting watch angels. So here I am telling you my angel joke. And it goes like this. Two friends talking and one of them says very proudly, you know, I have to tell you, my wife is an angel. The other one says, well, mine is not dead yet. Sorry. <laughs>